All right, guys, we talked about the settings for color settings for Photoshop. We talked about the color settings for Camera Raw. We explained what, when, how, and all that stuff. Well, now it's time to explain the one for Lightroom. Because Lightroom, believe it or not, on one hand is very simple, on the other hand is very complex. It just depends on how much you want to understand how it works. So you can be a regular user, and for a regular user, Adobe has made Lightroom really simple to use in terms of color management. Pretty much does most of the work for you, which is a good thing if you don't want to know about color management. However, if you want control, if you want to know what's going on, then it becomes significantly more complex. So what are, what are we going to do? Well, first I'm going to show you the simple version, just like your regular user, and if you're a user of Lightroom, probably this is the way you have been using it. And then I'm going to show you, in case you want to know more, what's going on behind the scenes and how you can get more control and what are the limitations. Okay? So first of all, I'm inside of Lightroom. I have a DNG file open from our last example with Camera Raw. Right? And first of all, if you're just a regular user, the Lightroom basically does this. It allows you to import your images, right? then you can choose what you want to do with your image and based on two different settings you can set up in two different ways how do you want to treat the color within the image if you go to edit and preferences here under external editor tab you have edit inside of Photoshop and here you under color space you can choose three color spaces that's it you don't have an option to even choose color match like we did in camera raw and you don't have any third-party ones like ECI. So you're quite limited here. But it's a simple choice, only three of them. Based on your choice, now let's say it's sRGB. If I will click, click OK, and if I were to go to Photo, Edit In, Edit Inside of Photoshop, it would open up an image inside of Photoshop using sRGB. Pretty straightforward. Similar to Camera Raw. Other option is that you don't want to edit your image inside of any external application. Instead, you want to export everything that you have here from Lightroom. So you would go to File, Export, and here under File Settings, you can choose different image formats, and some of the formats allow you color spaces. So here I would choose, again, it gives me three main options, sRGB, Adobe RGB, Pro Photo, and I have here an option for ECI RGB, but that's because I went originally to this other and here I have all the different RGB profiles listed in my computer. So if you have your profile for ECI installed, you should be able to find it here. Once you click on it, it will remember that choice and it will list it here. So I can choose to export my image as sRGB here, right, directly. Okay, so that's for classical user. If you're using a Lightroom like that, there's nothing wrong with it. It works just fine. It's designed to be very simple to use. However, if you want more control or if you want to know what's going on behind the scenes, let me show you. First and foremost, Adobe has decided to really complicate things. Uh, we can go into debate why and why not. I disagree with it. Here's what they decided to do. Two different teams worked on Camera Raw and on Lightroom. So even though the engine is still the same for processing the data, and we talked about it, it's Profoto primaries with linear gamma, gamma 1.0. That's the way both Lightroom and Camera Raw process the image behind the scenes. Something you cannot see, the, the space doesn't really have a name, it's just something that Lightroom uses internally and Camera Raw. But here's where they differ. Let me go back into Camera Raw for a second. If you remember, the histogram and the preview of your image changes based on the settings we choose down here, right? So it's basically the, the internal engine behind the scenes. The other choice is this. This is the way image will be open inside of Photoshop and this is the way it will reflect on the image appearance and on, on the histogram. Well, Lightroom complicates things. When you go to Edit Preferences and you choose under External Editor uh, Color Space here, it does not reflect on the image appearance 
and on the histogram. When you go to File, Export, and you choose color space here, it still does not reflect how your image will appear as well as the histogram. So what exactly is going on? Well, Adobe has decided to introduce yet another fictitious no man's land type of color space, which officially does not exist. It's only in Lightroom. And it's called, nicknamed actually, Melissa RGB. And Melissa RGB is Pro Photo primaries just like a pro photo color space and just like the internal processing engine to contain all the data uh, in terms of color but the gamma has changed it's not linear like the one that's used to process the image itself behind the scenes it's not pro photo original gamma which is 1.8 but instead it's gamma of sRGB that's how they decided to do it. So Melissa RGB is Pro Photo Primaries and Gamma of sRGB, or should I say Tone Response Curve, which is close to Gamma 2.2. So the uh, histogram that you see here and the image appearance and all that should be based on Melissa RGB. In fact, if I go to Edit and Preferences, I can set here my color space to be open in sRGB, right? And let me go to Adobe Camera Raw. I have set here to open up again in Photoshop and sRGB, right? Now check out the histograms. This is the histogram. Maybe I can switch this. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you because one is on top of the other application. So we're going to have to do it like this. So this is the histogram for sRGB, which really reflects sRGB, because that's what's chosen here. And this is the histogram that's, even though I chose an sRGB, it's not really sRGB. And even if I were to open this in sRGB, it wouldn't be this histogram. It's based on Melissa. So let me show you. See this histogram? And see this histogram? They're different. This is the one for sRGB. This is the Melissa RGB. In fact, if I go here and I choose Pro Photo and I click OK, all of a sudden the histograms appear to be more closer to one another, but they're still not exactly the same. Because even though they still have the same gamut, the gamma or the tone response curve for Melissa RGB for this one here is closely uh, 2.2 it's you know SRG, uh, sRGB type tone response curve and here is 1.8 which is the native for pro photo so in this is not for a regular user not really important you know, because it, it's still a usable a histogram right but if you're planning to judge histogram inside of Photoshop or Camera Raw and this one in Lightroom and you see the difference and you're asking what the hell well that's because this is Melissa RGB kind of no man's land fictitious color space which doesn't really exist you can make one inside of Photoshop and if you really want to match it but regularly you wouldn't see it anywhere else besides Lightroom just so you know so that's the complex version of Lightroom behind the scenes, right? Uh, and also, a library module here, if I'm not mistaken, I have to confirm this, but I believe that all the images that you see here are either going to be sRGB or Adobe RGB, the previews, while develop module will be Melissa RGB. So some people might see slight shift in color from library to develop module. Right now I don't see it, but some people have reported uh, differences. So if you do have that and it's, you're wondering what's going on, that's because here it's, I think the older versions of Lightroom had sRGB for preview, but they now switch to Adobe RGB. And here is Melissa RGB. So that's the difference in case you're wondering why uh, there's a color shift. Well, pretty much uh, that's it as far as the settings for Camera Raw and Lightroom. Also, if I go to File and I go to Export, right? Uh, important thing to rem to remember is that here under Other, unlike 
Photoshop, I can choose any I can choose any RGB profile, but I can choose CMYK or anything else like a lab or something like that beyond RGB because the whole pipeline behind Lightroom is based on RGB so if you're tr planning to directly send it off to CNYK you can't really you can send it off as a you know to, to be printed uh, using the RGB profile for print but not CNYK one and this also works if you're doing soft proofing uh, unlike soft proofing and we'll see inside of Photoshop soft proofing in Lightroom doesn't allow CNYK soft proofing so it's not usable for pre-press only for maybe inkjet printers or print labs and things like that anyway more on that when we get to actual uh, soft proofing